Hello everyone and a warm welcome from my side. I'm Svea Becker and I'm part of the SAP community team and um, I'm welcoming you to today's SAP community call. It's about SAP workflow management and the updates after SAP TechEd about process automation. And today here with me, we have Stefan Schluchter and Venu Gopal Chembra Kalat. Deal. Not too bad. Maybe a little bit better next time. <laughs> Welcome both. And both are product managers at SAP. And um, yeah, I already mentioned that you please only submit your questions during the call with a Q&A functionality. And if you have anything else to share, like Alvaro, um, greetings from Bogota, greetings back to you. And now the stage is yours, Stefan. I head over to you and um, have fun with today's community call. Thanks a lot, Svea, for this nice introduction. So I think it's the fourth community call or so, which we have together this year. And it's always a pleasure to talk to the SAP community, where we are also part of, and especially to talk about workflow management. So our main topic through the whole year and of course also next year and we thought well we have had tech ed probably some of you have also joined our sessions there but should to give to the SAP community really dedicated update what happened around workflow management and the whole notion of process automation we thought it would be good to have a dedicated call also here for you and that's why we are here my colleague Venu and myself Stefan so today we have a lot on the agenda, I can tell you. So first and foremost, we would like to give you a short introduction to workflow management at all. Probably also to the ones who are not too familiar yet or also for the ones who are already familiar to give you some new flavor. And also when we take a look at the road ahead and what will come in the, let's say, low code, but also no code area of process automation. <clears throat> We have also a demo we would like to show you. Actually, this was also the demo we have showed at TechEd. And we have also several new live process content packages, which we would like to introduce to you today. And then at the end, also give you some kind of guidance what's coming next year. I would like to give you a preview of our new kind on the block, if you will, around SAP process automation, what this means, um, and also how it this relates to SAP workflow management. But as I said, we have a big agenda. Let's go into details, All right? So when we talk about the intelligent enterprise, how we are supporting you as our customers and our partners to become also an intelligent enterprise, of course, there are different areas we need to tackle. On the one hand side, we have a kind of a solid infrastructure, a solid technology bottom line with the business technology platform, where, by the way, SAP workflow management is part of. Based on this, we have different applications, the Intelligent Suite, Svahana, also ERP, where we also, of course, ensure that different activities, different business processes are also managed and executed in the right way to really support you to get the best benefits out of this at the end. <clears throat> On the other hand, when we talk about business processes, we know they run across different functions, across different areas, and also there's the need to improve these business processes from time to time, but also to check, kind of a check whether these processes are running as expected. And especially when we talk about improvements about process automation, this is a topic of today's call. And we would like to show you here some new, some new features, some new technologies and also the road ahead. Probably you wonder, hmm, workflow, why is this important? And, um, we said here it's a kind of an accelerator field for mid intelligent enterprise because on one hand side we see that organizations are changing they're transforming how they're doing their core enterprise business processes but also they're changing probably the way how they interact with customers how they interact with stakeholders and also how they ensure that they have a kind of cross lob automation across different line of businesses and also including different kind of <clears throat> of systems at the end. On the other hand, what we also see, I mean, workflow really having activities which are digitized at the end um, is not, it's not the only thing. We have other process automation technologies in place here, for example, using AI business services for different scenarios, but also involving robotic process automation to, for example, automate dedicated tasks. <clears throat> On the other hand, what we also see 
and what is also one of our value propositions, that there is also the, the discussion ongoing in the market at your customers that you also would like to enable your, how we call it, citizen developers uh, in your organizations to create workflows on their own, to do these automations on their own because they know what's going on in the business. Um, probably they do not have this technical background and we also would like to leverage these kind of people to enable them to really do this extensions, for example, of business processes or to do automation of, um, of business processes on their own. When we talk about automation of, of processes, you probably would say, hmm, isn't this already included in, in S4 system, for example, within the standard business processes? And yes, to some degree, you are completely right. I mean, most of the processes, they are standardized. You will find them in different scenarios, likely to cash, like recruit to retire, design to operate, or also source to pay. You have your stable systems, processes are running, no problem at all. But of course, um, if you take a look also in <clears throat> a closer look in your organization, you will find out that there are different areas where probably you would like to extend standard business processes, the one use case, other use cases where you would like to create your own automated digitized workflow, which is probably slightly connected also to, to <clears throat> business applications. <clears throat> this, excuse me. Um, and sometimes you also need to do really to create something from scratch. And these are these kind of, let's say, 20% of non-standard workflows, which we are also supporting with the help of SAP workflow management to really, as we say, go this last mile of automation. When you take a look what workflows are all about, and there are different kind of categories of workflows, and the good news is all of them are supported by SAP workflow management. So sometimes we have workflows embedded in the application. So this means you do not really uh, see that there are really workflows running. You just take them for granted, so to speak, in LOB applications directly. On the other hand, we see extensions of workflows. So for example, um, having multi-approval steps, which you would like to manage, or we also have cross LOB workflows. So this means really orchestrate different activities across different LOBs, across different systems. And this could, of course, then include different, um, different areas and technologies. You will probably need a form. So to do some kind of entry of data, you would like probably need to use a kind of a business rule to really also automate certain decisions. You need to collect data from different backend system and also then work on this data. Probably also you would like to automate different tasks with the help of robotic process automation and then a final step also do some kind of approvals. Involve business owners, different stakeholders in the actual execution. And then finally distribute this data again. In addition to that, we are also providing you some kind of intelligence here. So to really also uh, support you here, any kind of decision making. When we take at workflow management itself, there are different capabilities included. And within the demo, you will see, by the way, all of them. So we have workflow, of course, so a low or sometimes also no code environment, which you could use to create workflows on your own. This is based on the standard BPMN, business process model annotation. But in addition to that, we also have a process variant editor, which you could use really in a low, in a no code environment used by a citizen developer to really create process variants based on the needs and also probably use here some kind of predefined pointer. On the other hand, we have business rules which you could use to manage any kind of decisions. One, the processes, the workflows are executed. You can also get end-to-end -end process visibility and then of course also work on all these tasks in the My Inbox application and then also in future in within the SAP Task Center. One very nice addition, which we have also launched around Tekka timeframe, so in November this year, um, was the workflow intelligence capability. So here we are providing you recommendations. So this means here we have machine learning algorithms who can be trained and who, is, who are taking a look at the, <clears throat> at the workflows which have happened in the past and then provide you some kind of recommendations if you, for example, need to do any kind of approvals. Why is this important? Imagine uh, probably in some areas, in some workflows, you have had a need so far to always include, for example, a 
someone from senior management to do any kind of approvals. Now you can really get this recommendation based on the business data from the system itself. And then of course, workflow management is integrated with intelligent RPA for digital bots with conversational AI, if you would like to make use of a digital system and so on and so forth. So now let's take a look at the process content packages because as I said in the beginning, we also would like to show you some news what we have done there. And coming back to, to the former picture I've showed you, so where you have a workflow with forms, where you would collect data, where you have business rules, approvals probably in RPA bot, and also then want to distribute this data, probably you don't want to start each and every time from scratch to do this. Also to connect to different systems, um, having also the connectors available there, the logic which you need there, the APIs and so on and so forth. So this is why we started um, actually already in 2000, uh, uh, in 2020 with this, with this pre-built content and also forced the creation of this content in 2021. And we'll do also move on with this next year quite heavily. And what is the background of this? So what you will get here within the SAP API Business uh, Hub, you will get the content packages. This could include workflows to business rules, um, also visibility dashboards and also pre uh, the, the user interfaces. And you can take a look at this content, whether you have already workflow management in place or not, it doesn't matter. Um, but once you have workflow management within your environment, you could actually download this content in the flexibility cockpit, then also adapt this content to your needs. And this can be done without no code at the end. So this means we are really providing here a configuration environment for the business process owner that can make use of this process content packages or even developers in your organization can adapt these, these content packages to their need and provide their own process variants at the end to the business process experts. And then they can start from there and really build up their own variants based on this. So having said this, so within the next 10 minutes or so, I would like to show you a demo. Actually, my colleague uh, Neely would introduce you to a demo um, about SAP workflow management, about the interaction with intelligent RPA, how also live process content packages can be used. And as I said before, we have here also new capability with workflow intelligence, how actually such kind of recommendations could be included. Hello, I am Nele and I'm a business process expert within my organization. Let's browse the SAP API Business Hub for the available live process content of workflow management. I want to take a look at all available content packages. I can sort them alphabetically or take a look at recently updated content. Today, I'm especially interested in how to improve the handling of invoices without purchase orders. So let's directly add this to my personal workspace in the API Business Hub. Managing the approval of sales orders is a pressing problem within my organization. This is an extension package on S4 HANA Cloud and on-premise. There are several documents that help me configure the process. Let's discover the default variant and its process steps that are shipped as pre-built content. The package also includes a pre-configured process visibility dashboard, business rules as policies for the approval decisions and validation, as well as all necessary vocabulary definitions. I want to use this great content and decide to add it to my workspace. Let's look at the process flexibility cockpit, the process workspace of SAP Workflow Management. Both packages have been added to my workspace. I navigate to the Process Hub to check out the available content packages once again. Perfect! The package Manage Sales Orders has been imported. I can configure the process with the help of these four tiles. I start with Manage Process Variants, a no-code workflow and process variant configuration tool. There are two variants available for me. I can see the start conditions of the variants. Sales orders above 500 US dollars have to go through a two-step approval. Sales orders below that get approved automatically. 
I can create a new process variant in which the default process steps are available for me for configuration. Let's name it high net amount and create a new variant. I click on edit and start the manage process variant editor. I configure the variant for my needs by simply dragging and dropping the pre-built process steps into the editor. Let's say I need several approvals here. One review as a parallel step and several sequential approvals. I can then configure the role assignments and business logic as start and step conditions. For demonstration purposes, I will move over to the pre-built two-step approval variant. Let's configure additional start conditions for the variant managing sales orders over 500 US dollars. I take a closer look at the step conditions for the parallel review of the Team Ops Manager. This step is started specifically for standard orders and for the specific sales order party in the US sales organization. I can add more or alternative conditions. Also notice that this business data is coming directly from S4HANA as vocabulary. The sales order validation step is very important for this process variant as we plan to automatically extract data from incoming customer mails attachments, like spreadsheets for example, and leverage an RPA bot for this. Business rules are used for this purpose. Let's check out the Manage Decisions tile in my application, so I can show you how to configure this business logic. I select the sales order validation rules in the decision diagram. This decision table implements rules for validation based on key attributes that are part of the shipped S4HANA vocabulary. Let's take a closer look at the configuration of the process visibility scenario. Multiple process participants can be configured into one process visibility dashboard. In my case, this includes the approval workflow, the S4HANA backend system and its business events, as well as a Qualtics survey to capture customer sentiments directly into the dashboard. Let's look at the default state definition for open, completed and abruptly ended now. The definition of status contains the threshold definition and target value. I can also look at the attribute configuration and the process performance indicators and manage their visual representation in the dashboard. Everything I showed you comes pretty much pre-built out of the box, but I can add additional logic or change the configuration to my needs. After successfully configuring and publishing the process to my Fiori Launchpad or SAP Workzone, let me show you the visibility dashboard in action. The dashboard provides real-time information about all sales orders that are currently in approval, the NPS score from Qualtrics and the sentiments attached to that. I explore the path analysis of the approval. Although the approvals have been granted in time, the order hasn't been created in the backend system. I can trigger additional actions in this process. Let's check a specific sales order now. For this one, a customer has already contacted me and we received a bad feedback on the cycle time. Let me search for sales order 3332. Everything looks fine for me since the expected circle time is 6 days and we are only 2 days into the process. However, it seems like the local manager hasn't approved yet, even though the automatic business validation had already taken place. Let's see how we can further improve the process. We are now in SAP work zone. Besides my tasks, I see workflow variants extending sales order management in SAP S4HANA, information about open instances, customer sentiments and that we use an RPA bot to automate the creation of sales orders. Let's look at the RPA bot leveraging document information extraction. The bot automatically extracts data from spreadsheets sent via email and triggers the creation of sales orders. Here you can see how to configure the creation of sales orders via the bot in a no-code environment. Additionally, I will configure workflow intelligence to get automatic recommendations into my work items. Creating a scenario only takes 4 steps. I click on create to start. Step 1. I enter the name of the scenario, the workflow ID and the task ID. Step 2. 
I enter the decision criteria, the information which was used by a user to take the decision historically. Technically, these are attributes of the workflow context. Step 3. I configure the interpretation of values stored in the decision. Step 4. I want to keep the workflow intelligence scenario up to date by retraining it for every X number of workflows completed. Finally, I can review my input and save and start the training. I have implemented a scenario before, which is already active. Retraining happens every 1000 records. The accuracy is at roughly 82%. That's really good for such a scenario. I'm going to remove the parallel review steps from the process variant as we now introduce machine learning based confidence levels to the workflow approvals. Let me show you the process in action now. I will manually trigger the bot to create sales orders from the spreadsheet automatically. For the demo, I will trigger the bot in an attended interactive mode. In the final implementation, this will be used unattended. I refresh the screen. All the orders have been created automatically. You can tell by looking at the customer reference numbers. Remember order 3332? Let's take a look. As I navigate in S4 HANA into the order detail, I see that it is still in approval. I navigate to my inbox and take a look at the work item from the workflow. I can see the confidence level and attached influencing factors here. As Thomas, the local manager, I will approve the order. Now Connie, the sales manager, can approve as well, which she does. If I check the S4 HANA system in the backend now, I can see that the sales order has been approved successfully. How is it built underneath? Firstly, I'll show you the low-code workflow editor in the SAP Business Application Studio. The workflow editor is a full-fledged BPMN 2.0 workflow modeling environment. It features all you need to implement comprehensive workflows, events, tasks, gateways, or inline in the process modeling experience. You can add intermediate timer or escalation events, for example, or model reference sub-processes for more complex workflow requirements. The user interface assignment, be it a simple form, an SAP UI 5 application UI, or a Fiori Elements user interface, lies directly in the workflow definition. This is the form you have seen earlier in the demo. Every workflow component is assembled into the default template as such a process step, with the configuration of process context for data mapping and for the process attributes you have seen in process visibility. Three process steps have been brought together into the template. The approval, the automatic update and the validation. On the general screen of the template, you can find the vocabulary configuration to assign the business rules project to the process variant configuration. A professional or citizen developer can see the end result of the default process variant directly within the SAP Business Application Studio. The validation process step is implemented as an unattended workflow to apply technical authorization as well as the business validation rules. that automatically uploads and extracts the data. So oh, this was the demo around SAP workflow management. And as you have seen um, in this demo, we have included more or less different automation technologies, but also we have shown you how you could really make use of this pre packaged content of these live process content packages. And with this, our next topic for this call would really be to introduce to some of the new use cases. We have listed here a few of them. Of course, you will get also the, the, the presentation later on. But we have also some new focusing on Eswahana and some other key industries. And with this, I now would like to hand over to Menu, who will guide you through this new use cases within the next 20 minutes. Menu. Thank you. All right, so I, oh, I hope you have already noticed the, uh, the different content what we are delivering through SAP API Business Hub. 
and uh, if you are new to this uh, maybe i just want to take you through and uh, then specifically focus on the recent uh, updates or the recent cotton packages what we have uh, uh, delivered so as you could see here in api business hub where we provide uh, all the different uh, apis of our sap lob applications but not only apis but also integrations uh, based on uh, different uh, sap applications and then uh, transactional events coming from different uh, business solutions especially uh, solutions like s hana and then uh, we have the workflow management content that's something which we want to focus and under the workflow management content, uh, I think if you visit uh, Business Hub every month, you could be able to see more and more content packages are coming in. And uh, some of these packages uh, might be familiar with you because we have released this in the past and uh, maybe if you would have tried it, tried it out. On the other hand, this year, uh, especially we have a very specific focus on S4 and also with the certain industries. So that is what you could see now, uh, the authorization for expenditure. This is a classical uh, workflow use case uh, for uh, oil and gas industries, right? So if you really want to plan uh, a specific uh, joint venture project, and then you need to get the approvals uh, from the both you know, operating and non-operating uh, parties as part of a joint venture project. How do you manage these uh, authorizations? Because it is span across uh, not only within the company, but also you know, parties involved uh, outside of it. So this is exactly what we want to address with this uh, one content package, which we have recently released. And uh, being an oil and gas customer, or especially if you are doing uh, you know, joint venture projects, this is something which uh, would be pretty helpful for you, where we provide the uh, complete automation, uh, including uh, the workflows, including the decisions. But not only that, we also provide a process visibility content, but you also would be able to get the related integration content because there are certain integration required to your Espohana system. This is also pretty well uh, described in our uh, setup guide. So if you go through each and every uh, you know uh, guides which we have attached as part of our content, you are able to see a solution view of what exactly or how exactly we have built it and what are the different uh, services required for it together with uh, you know some uh, configurations you need to make both that your uh, btp account with some destinations and you see the set of apis which we are exposing the different destinations you need and the connectivity between your uh, cloud systems and your on premise systems and uh, plus you can see now we also provide you the related integration content and if you are familiar with the uh, the SAP project systems and how the projects, the WBLS elements, et cetera, are configured where you can see now, you know, the related integration content. So that's a pretty, you know, uh, good content with something which uh, you could leverage, especially if you are coming from the oil and gas industry. And similarly, then you can see now there is uh, other content packages uh, like uh, Fixed asset write off, uh, right? I think if you have a fixed assets in your organization or in your company, certain time you need to do write off because, especially from an accounting perspective, it is uh, pretty important. And then, you know, uh, you really need the necessary approvals because each and every asset which is owned by maybe a specific uh, uh, and it comes under a company code and also there are a cost center owners who are responsible for it and when you trigger the write off of an asset first you need to get the necessary approvals from the respective uh, owners and then later you need to update your espohana system so that from a you know asset accounting perspective you also adjusting your books of account accordingly based on the current value of these assets again you can see this is a you know set of uh, workflows, set of uh, decision and visibility content. Plus we also provide uh, uh, the related uh, integration content. Again, it is based on s hana and uh, as an s hana customers, especially if you want to manage the assets or basically if you want to write off your assets, you can consume this content package. Uh, moving forward, I think then there are more. Uh, you can see now there is a uh, uh, plenty of content so i just want to show you some other uh, interesting that's the next one is the joint venture cost 
know, cash call approval actually this is again you know uh, going back to the oil and gas uh, industry where especially if you have a joint venture project and then you have a cash call, cash call approval where you also need to involve the, uh, the the parties as part of this uh, scenario and then you need to get the necessary you know approvals uh, as part of uh, payments which you, or the anticipated payments which you are expecting so this is again uh, we are focusing on specific industries and we identified some of the interesting use cases based on oil and gas and then we are uh, providing this uh, you know uh, content that's something like one of the common process problem in the industry so this again you know <clears throat> apart from that if you look at now uh, into the set of content what we are offering we can have the the asset least asset determination because uh, sometimes you have a lease contract uh, you know for an asset and then you want to terminate it and uh, how do you get the necessary approvals before you terminate the contract so again based on s hana system based on uh, finance and uh, a pretty important uh, process area something which uh, us a customer would be able to leverage so beyond that i think uh, you know uh, we are uh, preparing uh, more and more content and in the upcoming months you would be able to see content based on industries like uh, oil and gas or uh, utilities at the same time uh, different lobs like uh, procurement uh, finance in those areas uh, we are uh, publishing more and more uh, content actually so again yet another one come in front of me that is uh, monitoring the collection reminders from an account receivable perspective where you really need to you know, uh, send a noti 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 notice to the payers or to your customers who are not yet paid the invoice, and then naturally you need to send them the reminders. But then after certain you know, rounds of uh, reminders, you also need to take up this case to the legal and to the insurance teams uh, to make sure that, yes, we are able to get back the money uh, which are invoiced. And this is something which you could also automate now with the uh, uh, content package what we are offering there and then when you come to the service order side we also have a uh, you know, plant maintenance uh, based on uh, or, you know uh, order date uh, change notification that means if you have a service orders where there is some you know adjustments in terms of the delivery of the uh, service order it might be due to different reasons because you might have created a, a purchasing purchase order as part of this uh, service order and then there are delays happening naturally you need to adjust your service order you need to inform your customer etc how do you automate it so that is the another content package which we have uh, uh, released so like this you can see now more and more uh, content package coming uh, from uh, workflow management and uh, more or less most of them are related to our uh, espohana system based on different industries and based on different lob application and uh, again uh, as i said uh, you know these are this is a simple view of this content package so it is not only documentation it's a real uh, software behind it consists of workflows, uh, decisions, and uh, process visibility content, and how you as a customer would be consuming, you have already seen from the, you know, from the demo, but uh, definitely it makes sense to have a look at it from a, you know, uh, account perspective, how can you uh, consume this content, how can you benefit from this content. So as you could see here, this is a standard uh, launchpad, but we deliver from workflow management, and uh, as a process expert if you have the required authorization you can go to the process flexibility cockpit which uh, take you through the, the uh, you know process hub which is more like an enterprise view of uh, all this content what you have seen in api business hub and each one each of these packages if you look at now what you have seen there you can see now hey, there is a new content which is imported now and if there is uh, many other content which i have already imported but there are updates coming in now so i could easily you know uh, do the update or i can also import the content so once you have uh, imported the content naturally then it enable you to browse through the content so as a process expert you are looking does this uh, solve a specific uh, you know problem which i am facing in my uh, business today and then if it is the case then we would be able to go and uh, you know configure the content so the configuration of the content is again based on a template here so basically if you have not yet created a uh, variant you are able to create a new variant based on you know the template what we are offering so now for example like uh, you know uh, i just create a 
template for you as a new process variant. So once I have created it, I think the new variant is available to me. And once the new variant is uh, created, I am able to go to my process variant editor, which provides me the predefined steps which are you know available. So as you can see here, we want to get a, an internal uh, approval and then Typically, in a in a joint venture project, you have the partners, and there might be multiple partners involved. So you also might be, you know, uh, adding the respective partners as part of this approval, and then later you can have your finance approval, and then you post the, uh, uh, you know, expenditure back to the system. So this is uh, can be active, and then. In certain cases, for example, from the internal approval side, you could also decide under what conditions these approvals are required based on the gross amount, the project type, the currency, et cetera. And again, uh, as I said, some of these steps where you are able to do parallel approvals, some of them are sequential. So you have the possibility to drag and drop such a approval step and then, you know, uh, manage it accordingly. So for example, if you do not need a, an internal approval, directly go for the partner approval, you can uh, remove it. Or if you say, no, I want to have an additional uh, internal approval, then you drag and drop those approvals and then you would be able to you know, uh, manage it accordingly. So for example, if I do this here, and then if I was saying, no, okay, I want to do a parallel approval, then I have an additional approval step here. So this is a way typically we, uh, you know, uh, manage the uh, necessary approval steps in our uh, low code, no code editor. And uh, together with that, you can see the step conditions uh, or the start conditions under what conditions this workflow needs to be used, where uh, typically for certain project types, I want to use this, then you can provide the value or you say, okay, if it, the amount is uh, greater than or equal to a uh, certain value, only then I need to use this specific workflow variant, then definitely you can configure it according to your requirement. So that is a way you create a, a variant as part of the process template, what we are offering. And then definitely you can also see the related decisions. How do you determine the different approvers as part of it? And also then we have the process visibility related scenario as part of it. So like this, you can see now, each of this content package, you are able to, you know, consume uh, using our uh, process flexibility cockpit. Of course, then it's uh, each of this uh, content package. It not only consists of a certain set of uh, uh, process or the workflows, but also the related UIs and also the related to the integration content. So, just want to take you through, you know, one of our tenant where we have a reasonably good data, so that you really see. Yes, I think this uh, reflecting, you know, what exactly you are seeing. So let me take uh, one of the scenario and then show you, okay, how typically from an operational point of view, how do you see this? Uh, like the sales order scenario, what you have seen where you are able to see the active variants which you are executing, the related decision, and also you have the related process visibility scenario. So if you look at now, you have the a view of your processes from a governance perspective. Okay, what are the different process variants I have created? I'm currently, you know, executing in my system. On the other hand, you also get a uh, view from your uh, transactional side. Okay, how many of my processes are fulfilling my SLAs as it is defined, right? So that's also give you a deeper insight where you process visibility, you already have seen this in the previous demo, where it gives you a high level view, how the process area is functioning. And then you as a process expert could also deep dive and see how this individual, you know, uh, uh, instances or how certain key performance indicators are performing in your organization. But of course, then you also have the possibility to deep dive into this individual, you know, uh, aggregated uh, performance indicators and then really see, okay, what are those uh, instances? And later you have the possibility again to go to the, the details of each of these cases and then you know see how the different levels of approvals and uh, what are the different uh, uh, approvers who took part in as part of it, et cetera. You were able to see this through the process path, for example, here, right? And what exactly the time taken. So that is, you know, a pretty good view of uh, how a process area is functioning based on uh, process visibility. And uh, together with that, you know, uh, you can see how the visibility scenarios are configured. So each and every content package, what you see here now, we are providing the, the, the same view where you have the different process variants, you have the decisions and you have the, the underlying process visibility scenario, because this is a 
view of your business so from a business perspective you are not worried about how my integrations are done or how the uis are implemented how the workflows are implemented the business is primarily looking okay what are the value adding steps to me how is my process functioning based on the business kpis rather than you know kind of a technical monitoring of course we have the technical monitoring capabilities but the tooling what i'm showing you now it's uh, based on a process expert view where you really manage your process area and able to get a deeper insight into you know specific areas and now if you look at being a, a process owner or now being a task owner part of your uh, process i think if you are not uh, if you are not familiar with the workflow management we provide an integrated inbox here this is also a pretty you know cool feature where we provide an integrated uh, launchpad with all our toolings for you to start but of course then later you could also embed this uh, inbox in your uh, fury launchpad because nobody wants to provide uh, all the different toolings together to a business user so from a business user perspective it is more about you go to your fury launchpad where you are configuring different applications for uh, you know based on a different type of use case it might be like you know creating a business partner object it could be capital expenditure approval or create managing your invoice so all these applications are embedded into our fury launchpad and you can see now all our uh, existing content the net new content so every wherever we need to provide uh, user interfaces we are providing this based on sap ui5 and uh, you as a customer or a partner can directly import this content and you are able to you know uh, deploy this content or wherever configurations are required you are able to make those configurations and then you can consume the content so again you can see now this is an integrated experience where you can see the inbox here so the same inbox here it shows 524 tasks and if i go back to my you know uh, to my uh, portal site which is uh, coming from workflow management you see the same number of tasks so you see the same but one through the fury launchpad or the central fury launchpad and the other one is a standard a portal application workflow management providing but apart from that you can see if you are new to the inbox you are able to see all your tasks through the inbox application that means uh, as a business user you have a consistent uh, user experience whether you are in esfahana on prem or esfahana or whether you are in btp and one important thing i want to just to highlight because uh, since i touch upon inbox and this week we are already published our task center i think this is one of the important information i'm not sure stefan has already shared this with you but uh, i think you as a customer or a partner you have been waiting for this uh, application which is sap task center and we have released uh, uh, this week that means what does it mean to you like uh, today you see all the task from uh, workflow from btp workflow but with task center you as a task owner you will be able to see all your tasks coming from your esfahana system from your success factor system from your conquer system from your fields are system right so that means uh, you can as a manager as an example as a manager you are able to do approvals of your invoices from esfahana you are able to approve some of the or from the employee central perspective the to dos coming from success factors you can do approvals of your travel request coming from conquer or even an approval coming from your ariba system or even from fields class right so all these approvals can be now done together in task center but the task the the inbox what you see here now this is very specific to uh, bt or our btp workflow management depends on the scenario for example this you can see now there is a project which needs to be approved this is the data is coming from our uh, enterprise uh, project portfolio management and the project systems where you create projects and then you really need to do the necessary approvals or if you need to review your projects so like this all your task whether it is a project approval or whether it is a purchase requisition approval or whether it is a sales order approval all your workflow management tasks coming together into your one inbox and moving forward you have the you know single inbox which is sap task center enable you to see all your tasks in one central inbox so that is a new capability what you have released recently so with that i think we have now 14 more minutes i'm not sure how many the, the number of questions uh, already in the queue and uh, stefan i think you also need uh, 10 more minutes back and uh, maybe we can spend some time for a q and a yes thanks a lot Minu. so let me share again my screen so what you have seen right now 
also in demo um, of menu was SMP workflow management, also how the content uh, can be used there, what kind of new content we have there. But now we would like to give you a preview of what's coming next. So, um, because on the one hand side, and I've already told you this in the beginning, of course, there are developers there who can help you, who can provide you with workflows, with automations. We have also low code and no code tooling, but we also would like to enrich the capabilities, the, let's say, also the freedom of the people which we call citizen developers in the business areas a little bit more. And with that, um, we have uh, launched a preview of SAP process automation. One big cornerstone of our low-code, no-code strategy with an SAP besides application composition, besides digital experience, what you also see here uh, at SAP TechEd some weeks ago. And with SAP process automation, uh, the very nice thing is you will get a kind of an, an new citizen automation user experience with a dedicated process builder where you do not need, really need to know any kind of modeling notation. They are really simple chevrons and also you can make use of a forms builder there. But in addition to that, and this is really key for you also to understand, you will get all the advanced workflow management capabilities, which you have seen in the demo and in the presentation before by Wino and myself, and also all the embedded RPA capabilities, um, which are available there also in this environment. So with process automation, it's really an evolution of workflow management and evolution of SAP intelligent robotic process automation and really providing here a citizen developer user experience. On the other hand, what is still important so all the content also what we are providing can be reused here. So also also the, all the investments which you probably have made already with workflow management and intelligent RPI, RPA can be reused there. So, and in addition to that, you have also seen that there would be one really launch pad and task center where you can get then access to all these applications and automations. And of course, and I think uh, this is something also which you would expect coming a tool a new tool here from SAP that it's also well integrated with the SAP applications and also leveraging all the application development tools for any of, of the extensions you might want to do. So an evolution, as I said before, of workflow management. So all the capabilities which I've seen before are still there. So this also means if you are already, for example, a workflow management customer, what you will get in addition with process automation is really an um, and citizen developer user experience, also including access to the RPA and process builder. You will get, of course, the live process content, which you have seen before with a new growing um, set of new content artifacts, new templates, new skills. Also, if you're starting from intelligent RPA, for example, you will get in addition, of course, also the citizen developer experience, you will get additional artifacts like the workflows, the business rules, and so on, and also process visibility. And if you are completely new, you can explore all the no-code process automation within a citizen developer experience. You can really build up simple forms for your departmental process improvements. And of course, you can make use also of all the capabilities which are available within intelligent RPA or workflow management. So as I said, this is a preview. We are about to launch the, the first version of SAP process management in, uh, this is planned for Q1 2022, but also already in this call, we would like to give you a short preview how this looks like. So as you can see, the workflow editor really for application development, for expert experience. And on the other hand, what you will experience in a minute, the process builder within process automation. And the same is true for business rules editor. We're also transferring this information into SAP process automation. And for both workflows and for business, uh, for the business rules, we are using the same engine, robust, scalable, and also elastic as you have seen it also before. So with this, I will now um, show you the last demo of this session. And again, my colleague Nele will introduce you now to SAP process automation, or to be more precise, a preview of our plans for next year. In this video, I would like to show you how citizen developers can improve their processes
using SAP Process Automation. This is Harry. Harry is the Facility Repair Payment Process Owner. This process consists of four steps. The request review is a step which can sometimes take a bit longer. That's why Harry has recently thought about how to improve this step. Luckily, he just found out about a capability which allows him to put a step in place that automatically uploads and extracts the data of invoices. This will not just improve the process for his company, it will also increase the satisfaction of the employees who are requesting the payment. I'll show you how Harry implements this in the system. He navigates to the process that shows the steps that we just talked about. Harry created an automation here, which has the functionality to upload and extract invoices. Let me quickly show you what that means. It's an automation with one step. This step is all Harry needs to put an automation in place, which uploads the invoices and extracts their data. Everything is automated without the need of manual interaction. This automation can lead to a change of the process that is modeled here. The review step isn't necessary anymore and can be skipped, which means the approval will be triggered directly. Only a few clicks are needed to implement this process improvement. He includes the automation that he has just created. He then changes the flow of the process and removes the steps that are not needed anymore. This is all he has to do to improve the process. The big advantage of this solution is that everything can be accomplished with no code. This means he doesn't have to involve his friend Mary from the IT department. He has full access to all the capabilities he needs to improve this process. Whenever Harry is happy with the changes he's made, he hits release to create a new version. This step is very important to Harry. He needs to keep a track record of the previous process versions that he had in place. It could be needed for audit reasons and it's always helpful to be able to go back to an earlier version to check which steps were there in case any questions come up. This is a significant change for Harry. He also adds a short comment and releases the project. Finally, he needs to restart the project in a way that it's also deployed into the environment. In order to do that, Harry needs to navigate to the project version that he's just created. The process is applied with the click of only one button. The solution takes care of everything else in the backyard. It wires up the right steps so that this process can now be actively used in the company. Let me show you now how I can add business logic into my process as well. This means decision actions and conditional gateways, so that, for instance, approvals are only required on a certain cost threshold. I select decisions from the available artifacts and create a decision for approver determination. The business rules editor opens and I can define the input and output for my decision. In this case, Based on the department and the value of the requisition, the expected output is the email of the approver of the task. I can add a policy and configure a decision table to determine the approver automatically. Furthermore, I can add a condition which leverages the approver determination strategy. I select the approver email as the expected output of the decision for the conditional branch of the process. If the decision output value is empty, the process will end. If it returns the expected email, it will send the approver request to the responsible person. Let's take a look at monitoring and process visibility for my processes now. In the monitoring dashboard, I can see all deployed content and historical information. I can also look at the process visibility scenarios to get insights into live running processes. In the Process Visibility Dashboard, I can see all relevant information about my approvals and all relevant process performance indicators. Yeah. This was the introduction into SAP Process Automation, uh, as I said before, an evolution of workflow management and intelligent RPA. And now, um, yeah, it's up to you to get more information. Please be um, welcomed and also 
introduce here to our SAP communities on Intelligent RPA and of course also in workflow management. You can also learn more about SAP process automation. Um, after this call, we will also share the presentation with you. There we have considered all the links regarding related SAP ticket sessions. There have quite been a lot of them. Some lectures you will find there. But for and for most, and I have separated this here also, there are some hands-on sessions where you can really build workflows on your own, where you can make use of the provision live process content, where you could also include an RPA bot in INT261 with this content and also make use of one of our latest release capabilities of workflow intelligence. If you still want to learn more, you are invited to also join uh, the Open SAP course, which we have done for our workflow management, or even go to an SAP training offered by SAP Education around this topic. So with this, we are now at the end of our session. Um, thanks a lot for being with us. And now let's see whether there are still some open questions which we can address. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan and Venu. Unfortunately, we do not have so much time to cover all questions, but there's a question from Alvaro Enrique. Can SAP workflow interface with tools like Automation Anywhere? Is this something you can answer? So um, we are providing different kind of APIs. So REST-based APIs of workflow management, and there are uh, possible possibilities to do this. Um, on the other hand, I would also recommend you to take a closer look also on SAP process automation, which is planned to be released next year, because then probably this question is not uh, relevant anymore and you will straight directly use process automation instead of automation anywhere. Okay, thank you. There were some questions also about the demo video. And here I want to again highlight that we, of course, have recorded the call. So that means the demo, which Stefan has played from his colleague Nele, all these demos are included in the recording. So you can access them via the recording, which will be shared very soon in our SAP Community YouTube channel, but of course also in the SAP community. And Stefan posted the topic page for SAP Workflow Management here as well in the chat. I highly recommend to follow the tag and also, of course, check out if the recording will be posted there very soon. With having said this, um, I we are at the top of the hour. I need to stop the call. So thanks very much, Venu. Thanks very much, Stefan, for having been part again of this um, community calls. And it, thanks to the audience, of course, as well. And I wish everyone a great time and stay safe and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you bye soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.